These days, everyone seems triggered by words. In particular, team mascots that have become the latest target of certain woke warriors. Any mention of Native Americans, no matter how revering or celebratory, out. The term gator bait is off limits now as the University of Florida stopped using the phrase as a cheer due to the term's allegedly racist history. Now the name change debate has reached D.C., where George Washington University says it will dump its colonials nickname by the start of the 23-24 school year. You might be wondering, what's wrong with the name Colonials? I thought the name clearly referred to the inhabitants of the 13 colonies who fought for their freedom. In fact, one of the logos depicts the school's namesake, George Washington himself. But the university now says the name is too divisive. According to a statement GW put out yesterday, quote, given the division among the community about the moniker, it can no longer serve its purpose as a name that unifies. This is not a rash decision. Back in 2020, then-GW President Thomas LeBlanc announced a special committee on the colonial's name in light of the complaints that the term glorifies colonialism. You know how serious this was when the committee released a 31-page report in March of 2021 that laid out the complaints about the allegedly racist undertones of the nickname. Quote, for opponents, colonials means colonizers, both here and abroad and refers to those who stole land from indigenous groups, plundered their resources, murdered and exiled native peoples, and introduced slavery into the colonies. These are perspectives that cannot easily be harmonized, and it is the broader historically based understanding of the opponents and the meaning they attach to the term colonials that causes significant offense and harm if its use continues. But why do the opponents get to define the word? Colonials isn't some made-up term invented by GW to serve as the school's nickname. It literally means an inhabitant of a colony, whereas colonizer literally means a person who colonizes and in recent years has been adopted as a kind of slur. The committee conducted a survey of more than 7,300 alumni, students, faculty, and staff members and say that 44% of respondents wanted to drop the colonial's name, 43% in favor of keeping it. However, just 25% of people said that they felt included by the use of the Colonials moniker. Included? Do mascots like Blue Devils or Tigers or Orange make them more included? The university's tried to downplay the clear reason why they're doing this with what feels to me like a bit of a faux historical explanation. In that same statement, they claim George Washington himself allegedly rejected the term. The term colonial didn't become popular until the 19th and 20th centuries, and the name lacked, quote, thoughtful university-wide consideration when it was adopted by the school back in 1926. Look, I understand people having issues with the name the Washington Redskins, and I can certainly understand why names that celebrate the Confederacy are troubling. But this feels like sort of a, just a slap in the face of America's founding fathers, like a rejection of our nation's initial heroes. But joining me now is George Washington University professor, Denver Brunsman. Professor, thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, what am I getting wrong here? Well, Dan, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I thought you actually laid out uh, my case pretty well <laughs> in quoting from our report that, you know, I think there's one large reason for this name change, and that is the divisiveness of it. A uh, moniker should bring uh, a campus, uh, a university together. Uh, it shouldn't uh, be divisive. And I think it's divisive for you know, a number of reasons. I'll just cite three briefly, and we can follow up on any of them. Uh, one is what you stated, that a large number of our students, faculty, and staff uh, would rather not be associated with an institution that celebrates an incredibly tragic chapter of American history, a period that involved the decimation of you know, tens of millions of Native Americans and the institution of slavery. Um, second, we have a very large international student body uh, many of these students have lived with the direct and indirect effects of colonialism, and so it's quite a shock to them to come to the United States and, and, and go to university and all of a sudden be called a, a colonial. And last, and this is really how I come into this debate, because I teach about George Washington. I have a, I have a class that I teach for GW students at Mount Vernon, and that is the term was never associated with George Washington. Uh, he actually re rejected uh, the label colonial, um, and, and so it's not even fitting for the namesake of our university. You know, if we, if we could go back and start at the very beginning and there was no copyright and, 
if our currently suffering uh, baseball team didn't already have the name, you know, I think the Nationals would be the ideal name for the university. Oh, right, well, look, uh, fair enough on, on, on some of this, but it does feel like you're letting people who want to find divisiveness define the conversation, and which made me think of the fact that earlier this year, a GW student wrote an editorial in the Washington Post calling on the university to drop not just the Colonial's nickname, but George Washington's name as well. It read in part, quote, a new name would cement the university's dedication to racial justice and affirm its commitment to change. It's time to take action because, after all, George Washington was a slave owner. And so I would assume that in that effort to make sure that everyone feels included, that now the name is going to change from George Washington University as well? Well, I think that a majority of people on campus didn't agree with that particular editorial. Although, you know, I applaud any student who stands up for, you know, his or her uh, opinions. Um, I will say that in the very long process that you s cited, this has been a, a deliberative process. It's, it's actually taken years. Um, in the specific guidelines that we worked under, you know, they state that we can consider the renaming of various buildings and, and things like the, the moniker, the Colonials. But the name of the university, George Washington University, is just not up for debate. Why? So Why? I think in this larger debate, it's I'm, not it's a, divisive. I'm not accusing you of this, but it's I, divisive. But I it's, think, right? But I think that's a red herring. Nobody at the university is calling for the, the change of, of the name, and we wouldn't because we're proud of a lot, you know so many things that George Washington uh, did and in his legacy, which well, includes our our country and our our university. But aren't we proud of what all the colonists did back then? I mean. Again, are you okay then if we can not call the name the Colonials? How about we call it the Colonists? Yeah, well, I think that would be more historically accurate because the term colonial as a noun uh, was never used in the colonial period. Uh, this is an right, invented so, term. So GW uh, Colonists? Of the early 20th are we in? Century. Are we in GW Colonists? We're, we're not. We're, we're not in because we uh, still have all the same problems that I cited of before course. Uh, with of course. colonialism. Of course you do. And because with they George want to Washington. But they want to misinterpret the word, the word. He didn't love the word colonist either. <laughs> but they, but he, is it fair to he, say. He didn't appreciate that word either. Is it fair to say that as a technical matter that those who are opposed to it are misinterpreting the term? Um, no, I wouldn't agree with that at all. I think that the people that support the term colonial, and there are some, and I understand that. We have, you know, we have a terrific uh, alumni base, and, and many of them, you know, feel an affinity for this term because I think they associate it with revolutionary. Yes. And they're quite different things. I think the colonial period uh, was much different than the revolutionary era. And who other than George Washington tells us that in his own papers in rejecting the term <laughs> colonial? Yeah. He thought of it as something as a, of a narrow mindset, a provincial way of thinking, this sort of localism that existed in the colonies when he was trying to create a great nation. Right. You know, I think that he, he wanted to create a, a country in which people thought of themselves as Americans, but he not wasn't, as, you know, Marylanders and New Yorkers and, and as colonists. But he wasn't rejecting it for the same reasons that you guys are rejecting it now. But anyway. Um, <laughs> well, De no, we're, we're a couple hundred years later, yeah, so exactly. you're right about that. All right. <laughs> uh, Denver Brunsman, thank you for coming on the show and being a good sport. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.